Hello and welcome everyone, Velocity Banking students, Kingdom citizens, and new people. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. And today I have a special guest with me, Brittany Green, who I'm going to bring on. She's going to talk to us on some updates on credit building in 2022. So stay tuned. Hey guys, it's your girl, Brittany Green. I have not been here for a while, but I'm super excited to join you guys on Denzel's amazing channel for us to talk about credit building in 2022 because a lot has changed since the last time that we've been together. So for those of you who do not know me, my name is Brittany Green and I am the CEO and founder of Crown Financials, where it is my mission to help my students increase their credit score anywhere from 50 to 300 points without having to hire a credit repair company. So as you know, if you've seen in the previous videos, credit building is essential prior to doing velocity banking. So let's talk about some of these updates that are coming up, um, some that are happening right now, and then some that will be happening in the near future. So first and foremost, let's talk about bureau updates. So as we know right now, there are three bureaus, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. Now, in the upcoming months, I can't tell you exactly how many months, but as soon as I know, you guys will know because I'll ensure to put something out to Denzel when those changes are happening. But there has been conversation about switching from three bureaus, so no more TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. They'll be going down to one bureau under the CFPB, which is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. So what does that mean for you as the consumer? It means that you should start getting to work on your credit today. You need a strategy in place because once that transition happens, for those folks who have amazing credit at that time, it's gonna be an easy walk in the park because they'll just be able to consistently move how they were prior to. But for those who are having problems with collections or having problems with their credit, it may be a little bit more difficult as they start to shift things. So you don't wanna be in that place where you're like, hey, I got goals that I'm looking to meet, I'm ready to start Velocity Banking. Then you're having to wait until they've panned out all of the systems. You know how things are when you first start something, there's a learning curve, there's bugs, there's things to adjust. So with that being said, there are gonna be some updates. There are gonna be some things that they have to pan out and make things work with. So you don't wanna be caught in that crossfire trying to fulfill your goals and trying to fix your credit at the same time. So let's talk about some things that you can do to kind of prep yourself because because again, we don't know exactly when it's going to happen. It's still in conversation, but it's leaning more so towards doing that because the system of the three credit bureaus has been a little corrupt for some time with data breaches, incorrect reporting, things not being consistent across the three bureaus. Those are some concerns that are making it a little unfair for consumers to exercise their rights the way they'd like to. So those are some things that we're going to be, you know, that they're looking to update. But of course, just as there are pros, there are cons as well. So that's one of the things for the bureau updates. Here's another thing that that's coming or that happened recently that you should know about for medical collections. So for those folks who are like, hey, all right, Brittany, I'm, I'm ready. I'm excited. I want to go ahead and start working on my credit. Here are some things to know or some things to look out for on your own report just to kind of say, hey, OK, I'm, I'm getting ahead of the game. So if you have or had medical collections on your report, if they have been paid off, um, most of those have gotten removed as of July 1st if you have paid those off. However, if you have not paid off those collections, but it's under 500, as of 2023, they'll be removing those collection accounts that are under $500 that are existing unpaid, okay? Another amazing thing with medical collections moving forward is at first when you got a medical collection after that first six months of, or once you got a hospital bill after that first six months of non-payment, they would immediately send it to collections. Now they have to wait an entire year before they can send those things over to collections. So what does that mean for you as the consumer? That gives you number one more time for you to settle those medical um, bills with the hospitals or with the original creditors. And number two, it protects your credit for up to a year for those medical collections that will be hitting your file if you didn't let's say for example if you never got the the paperwork in the mail or you forgot to call right it gives you a little bit more time but this is the time to start digging up and you know finding any of those medical collections that you have so that the, they're not getting it hit on your credit 
um, once they start really shouting them out. Because I had a client who had 31 medical collections hit his report at one time. Yes, at one time. And of course, we were able to get all of those removed by exercising his rights. But again, if you're in the midst of obtaining a goal, you don't want those things hindering you. So you want to make sure that you're digging up, looking through all your mail, seeing if there's any medical collections that are in the mail, because guess what's going to happen? You want to make sure that you're taking care of those before it gets to that one year time frame with the original creditors, of course, so that those are not hurting your score. Because I'll tell you this, this is what they're looking at now for building credit. Building credit in 2022 is looking at trended data and balance. So I remember when there was a time when all you had to do was if you had an extensive amount of credit that you've used is all you had to do was pay it down. Right. And then now your score was immediately at 700. It was amazing. Right. But now they're looking at trended data. What do you do on an every month basis? and also the balance of your file. So those medical collections, those things that have gone unresolved. And that's why I say we really want to focus on clearing out any of that old that old data because when they switch the credit bureaus from 3 to 1, it's going to be a little bit difficult to resolve those negative items outside of paying for them until they've cleared all the bugs, they've gotten the, you know, new letters out or the new process of what it takes to dispute. That's going to be some time, right? So in order to ensure that you're not caught in the crossfire of having an imbalanced file due to old collections um, and old uh, medical things, unresolved things, and so that you're in the in the wind of trended data and that you're working on a, on a good in a good space to build your credit, you want to ensure that all this is the time to clear out all of those negative things. So any old addresses, any old um, again, medical collections, closed accounts that still have balances, all of those things you want to resolve now because that's contributing to the balance of your actual credit file. OK, so trended data, what you do on an every month basis, which is how you use your credit cards, how you're paying on your loans. Are you paying on time? Are you keeping your utilization low? They're looking at that, but they're also looking to see, do you have closed accounts with balances? Do you have old medical collections that are still existing out there in the realms that they want to just throw on your file? Or do you have any existing collection accounts that have to be resolved? All of these things are going to be super duper important to bring yourself to a good balance because everything is like a weighing scale, right? Everything to bring you to balance so that you can focus on how you're using your credit cards on a monthly basis, how you're paying on time, different things like that, okay? So just to kind of recap, bring it all in. These were some of the updates that were going on. The bureau updates, it is in conversation that they would like to move from three bureaus to one out of the fairness for consumers, especially when it comes to uh, you guys wanting to obtain credit, they want to make sure that you're looked at in a fair, uh, you know, a fair space. However, with that being said, you want to make sure that every section of your file is properly balanced so that when they are looking at that, you're getting treated, of course, fairly, but you're doing your part as well. OK, you also want to focus on trended data, meaning what you do on a month to month basis with the current accounts that you have. It's not the times where you could just pay it down one time and you're great to go. No, they're sometimes looking back as far as 2020 to see what you've been doing over time to say, hey, OK, this person has had this account for two years. How how many months were they at a 60 percent or above utilization? Um, with that being said, how many late payments did they have? Right. Or if it's a new account, they're looking at your old accounts as well. Right. But they're like, OK, well, with your new account, hmm, this is a new account. How many months have you paid on time? Forget what you've done in the past. Right. What are you doing with these new accounts? Trended data is a huge, huge theme. So pay on time every time. Communicate when you can. Right. Two, make sure that you're keeping your utilization low. For those who are not actively doing velocity banking at this time, this is when you want to focus on the strategy of keeping your utilization low so that you can be approval ready for those HELOCs, PLOCs, uh, BLOCs, because we said business uh, lines of credit as well. So for all of these different locks, you want to be presentable for that and approval ready. So ensure that your trended data matches what's going on. So for those folks who are not actively velocity banking, focus on your trended data of paying on time every time, communicating when you can't, keeping your utilization low, right? And then lastly, keeping a good balance of your file 
clearing out, taking advantage of this new, these new laws with the medical collections, right? But also clearing out any of those other collections that you may have to keep your stuff in balance, okay? Now, the resources that I have for you guys is called the A to Z Credits Masterclass Coaching Program, where it is a system and a framework that walks you from end to end on how to understand your credit file, how to repair your credit file, and how to maintain the score or the strategy that you have once you have it, okay? So you can find that, and I know Denzel will post the link below, but you can find that on the website, if I can spell correctly, <laughs> www.crownfinancialsllc.com. And they have memberships starting at $97 a month where you're able to go in, get the content, organize yourself, organize your file, get that trended data in order, get that balance in order so that you can build your score up and get towards you know the HELOCs, the PLOCs, the BLOCs, all the different things that you want towards your goals. And they have, we have one-on-one -on -one options as well, where you're able to be able to get some of my time outside of that content in our monthly calls, where we go over all of this amazing information. So I hope this was helpful for you guys, brought some clarity as to where credit building is going in 2022. And I'll see you guys next time.